Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nairi, also known as Wedding Fashion Expert. Today we are here at Lavella Bridal located in Los Angeles, California, and I am going to teach you how to properly steam your gown and veil for your special day. I've also done a video on how to properly travel with your gown, so please be sure to tune into that to learn all about that. Before we move into it, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment below, let me know what you'd like to see and hear about. I am here for you. Alrighty, so bridal stores typically do steam your gown before your wedding day, but I want you to know how to do some touch-ups just in case there are some wrinkles and if you are traveling by plane, by the time you get to your destination, your gown and veil are going to be wrinkled so you'll need to know how to properly steam them to get all the wrinkles out so you're wedding day ready. Here is a gown that I've selected that we're gonna do. It has lace, tulle, and horsehair. I've picked this intentionally because I want you to know to avoid horsehair. If you steam, and this is the horsehair here, this band, the reason why it, it's a synthetic material, the reason why they call it horsehair is because it kind of feels thick like a horse's hair. So that's, that's the naming behind it. You want to avoid that. It's really, really important. When steam or an iron hits this, it actually stretches and expands and it will deform and start to do weird things like this and bubble from where it was originally sewn. So when you go to steam this, essentially what you do, here's the steamer. It's not on just for the sake of noise so that you can hear me, but it would go, you would just steam just like this. And this gown has been see, steamed. You'll notice that there are some wrinkles through it. The wrinkles through it is normal for a tulle fabric. It's always going to have some sort of a ripple effect. If you try to sit there and try to get it all out, it won't, so don't panic. Once it falls down, it looks beautifully steamed. And if you see little wrinkles here and there, you can address those. I would recommend to leave the top tool, this mesh, completely alone unless you feel like it needs it. You have to be careful with steaming. Sometimes it can actually stretch materials and fabric. So you want to be really, really, really mindful of that. So I would leave this complete top part alone. I would only steam the tool. And for the layers underneath, all of this would be perfectly fine not to touch. You're better off not touching it than being just super neurotic and doing it all because you can actually cause more damage than good. So you're better off just doing the top layers in which you see. Now, for satin materials, any types of silks, or any fabrics that are super, super delicate, please be sure to talk to the alteration department, the seamstress that you're working with, or the store that you've purchased it from to understand how that needs to be treated. You will likely need an iron and not a steamer because sometimes a steam can create a ripple in a natural silk and kind of burn the fabric as well. So you'll want to understand what fabric your gown is and what is the best things to use on your gown. This is the travel steamer that we do recommend. I'll link it for all of you below in this video so that you have access to it. Now I'm going to show you how to properly steam your veil. Here's how your veil will most likely come hung on a hanger. I'm going to show you how to take it down and properly steam it so that it is ready for you to wear on wedding day. Let's do this. So what you want to do is majority of veils, and if they don't have it, you'll see how wrinkled it is. This is exactly how it'll come. It's not pretty. Okay. So most veils will have a string that comes with it to hang it from the comb. If it doesn't, you can put a string through one of the teeth on the comb and string it through there because what you'll want to do is be able to hang it on the hanger. So this is how you're going to get wrinkles out of it and for them to remain out of your veil. So I'm. this is the blusher here, it's nice and short. And notice how it's rolled up, so I'm gonna show you exactly how you would steam this. And then here is the rest of it. So just like the dress, reiterating, I don't touch the lace. Lace is a form of cotton depending on the type of laces and it can stretch, right? So you just kinda wanna leave it alone and just do the tool. So to make veils go faster, what I actually do is I fold them in half like this while it's hanging, and I would take the steamer and just steam like this. So I am doing both layers at the same time instead of doing it individually. This is better, right? So you would just do 
the same exact time and then I kind of flip my positioning so that wherever I was holding, I'm able to steam that as well. And then you'd be able to get all the wrinkles off. Just as I mentioned before in the, like just on the dress, tool doesn't always come out to be perfect. You may still have some wrinkles, so just be mindful of that. Another thing you can do, for example, on a dress, let's say if you are worried about the delicateness of a dress and you want to do the lining like i would for example i would not touch this lace at all i would leave that alone but let's say you want to do the lining a safe bet is to not steam on the outside but to go from under and come out that way right so i'm going underneath the dress and the reason why i recommend that is if it damages the fabric it would damage the interior of it so again, with the veil, with the dress, just be mindful, ask the manufacturer, the store, the seamstress, whoever helped you, what is the best way to deal with these fabrics. Tool is always safe with the steamer. You're totally fine with it. I would leave laces alone. Lace doesn't really wrinkle. And sometimes veils have horsehair on the edge to manipulate the fabric to sit a certain way. Again, on your veil, avoid touching the horsehair. I hope that this helps for more videos and tips like this. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video.